Another promise, another scene. Another packaged lie to keep us trapped in greed. With all the green belts wrapped around our minds and endless red tape to keep the truth confined. They will not force us. They will stop degrading us. They will not control us. We will be victorious. So come on. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, deep in the bowels of our underground lair, setting the controls straight for the heart of the sun, one hand on the mic and another on our shotguns. Here we are. Wow. Welcome back. What an opening. Huh? That's epic <laughs> right there. How you Always doing? a pleasure from our underground layer yeah. here, uh, protected from COVID nineteen as well as anything else. Yes, uh, as we we have protected our, from stupid ideas. From, yeah, it's like it's like a yes. ten feet of cement is keeping us in right now here in our <laughs> underground layer. As we once again, bring, what what are we at? One hundred and sixty some odd. Uh, this will be one sixty one. One sixty one, almost yeah. a baseball season, almost, almost a full baseball season. Yeah, one hundred and sixty two games, and of course, Jay, you know what year they went to one hundred and sixty two uh, games together? I don't. <laughs> I, I do remember the year that the Twins had. I don't remember the actual year, but I remember in in my mind that the year the Twins went to one sixty three. Oh, 2009. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's 1961 that we went oh. from 154 to 161. Yeah. The year baseball changed forever. That yes. was the year you had expansion, and it, it was never the same. But it is when, uh, nothing stays the same forever. you got to remember that. So mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't look back on it and cry. I only <laughs> cry that South Korean baseball... Is just not the same. I, I tried to watch a couple innings. Yeah. I agree with Governor Walls on that. That was pretty tough to watch. You know, one of the problems is just, a lot, that? just yeah. a lot of Korean people too. What's with all the Korean people? <laughs> Anyhow, look. That's I a mean, joke, folks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Do, yes. The song sounds very familiar. Yes. Very familiar to me. Okay. Um, but I cannot pinpoint who sings it or what the song is. But the lyrics mm. sounded familiar. Yes. So do I get a quarter of a point no. for them sounding familiar? No. One quarter? I get a quarter? No? All right. All right, Jay. In light, I, I'm going to guess it's not Dion and the Belmonts. No. So what? what is it, then? It is Uprising by Muse. Hmm. Muse. Yes. M-U-S-E, Muse? Yes. Okay. Just like that. You know, I, I got it. Gene Simmons once made a statement about band names mm-hmm. as to to how do you get to a name, yes. and he said something very. It's I don't know why it stuck with me, but he said you want a band name so simple that it can't be any simpler. Yeah, I mean Kiss is a great example. You know, right, it, it, it's so simple that it can't be any simpler. Yeah, so there you go. And he, by the way, he also said there was a Kiss before Kiss. Do you know that? Yes. He said, but they had the name trademarked. Right. So it was, oh. yeah, so it was interesting things when you watch yes. Gene Simmons on yeah. TV. Okay. And I don't know if I always agree with that sentiment. I mean. You're right. But, you, but you had a band called Bread. You know, yeah. and it, 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 a, what does that say about your band? Pearl Jam, though. How do you, it's interesting how you get uh, to that. How do right. you get to the crash test dummies? I mean, I don't uh, know what, you know, what, uh, but you think of a band like the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can't simplify that anymore. No. So I mean, it just maybe that's the iconic thing is that you don't want something long, it, but you want something short yeah. and catchy and Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's not know. short. Yeah, I guess. I think it's. But just... you can't just be the peppers. No. Okay, because you got to be special peppers. Right. It's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Right. So maybe maybe you're right. I mean, maybe it's not for everybody, but you know, uh, when when you think of band, you know, how did how did you get to that? Uh, and I always thought about that. Could you simplify that band name anymore? Hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah, and you know, it. There are people who are good at naming things, and I don't think it matters how short or how long it is when they're really good at it. And some people are really bad at naming things. Well, and, and ultimately, the music has a lot. Long. The music has a lot to do with it too. Yeah, that too. Uh, there are a helps. lot of forgettable bands that had terrible music. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> Huh? I won't name them here. I won't name them here. <laughs> they're, they're definitely right about that. There yes. are the Milli Vanillis. Okay. Now, uh, Jay, I, I had a question from somebody who uh, kind of recently discovered our show. 
Yes. And they actually Facebooked me okay. a question. And it's interesting. Uh, I'm not going to share the person's name or anything. I actually, somebody I hardly, I really don't know very well, but just said that they've been listening and gone back and done old episodes. And that's, I always, I know we appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate those a lot comments. of good information in those and I've, shows. Yeah, and I've gotten asked this before, and I just want to get your, your take on this here. And the, the question was, um, and I, and I, I don't like to, to put words in people's mouths, but I feel like the person was more entertained by us yeah. and educated. Well, but that's good. found the show funny and found the show didn't want to turn it off, wanted to listen to the. But I, I felt like it was more entertainment and some. <laughs> I guess it depends on the episode, maybe. Maybe. Because you know, we do episodes that are. More serious and epi- you know, I mean, it, it, it's just the way it is when you do this every week. But one thing I got asked was how much we go over the show before we do it. Yes. And my answer is always the same. Okay, and and we just did oh. this. So we're going to pull back the curtain on, the, on, the, on our are. magic a little bit. It's kind of like professional wrestling. We're yeah. going to let you in like ten percent, but we're still not going to, you know, we're still not going to teach you how we do everything here. Right. Um, but to pull back the curtain, okay, the average show that we do, we do, you and I message a little bit back and forth mm-hmm. about, you know, the, the topic is this this week. We're, sometimes we have a list of topics. We have 10 shows in the can that we're trying to figure out. Then we have a guest and we have, you know, I mean, things change. Like COVID-19 is a great right. example. We had a list of topics and then for two months, this is the only damn thing we've been talking about. <laughs> and so there's, but yes. I mean, the question I guess that I got asked was, um, what do we do for show prep? And I don't know if this person's interested. And I've gotten asked this before mm-hmm. um, of of how much that we, do you guys just banter like that? Is is the opening? Is that re, you know? And I always say this: the best. And, and I shouldn't always say this, but to me, what works the best is when you don't over rehearse something. Right. You, know, you and I have a topic. We got websites we look at. We got stories we look at, mm-hmm. and that's about the yeah. extent. We might discuss what we talk about first, second, and third. Yeah. I mean, we do a lot of research. Don't right. get me wrong. That's but yeah, because that's that's how we get to providing the facts. That you know, when you listen to the Community Solutions podcast, uh, you are getting stories on the ground here from local government in the state of Minnesota and sometimes and we bring beyond. in other states yeah. and, and, and countries uh, when it fits as well, uh, especially when we're looking at, at groups from outside of the state that, that are trying to put an influence onto our local uh, cities and counties and, and school districts. Uh, but uh, there's always a good amount of study that goes into that because we have to know our facts. We have to understand what we're talking about. We we don't want to present something and, and have it be false uh, on the rare occasion that it is. It yeah. happens to everybody. You know, we try to come back and correct that and say, okay, well, uh, we could have been more accurate with this. But we, we try to eliminate that by doing research on, you know, on documents especially. But, you know, when we're dealing with groups, websites, and, and but their it's, but it's le- also, legislative agendas beforehand. It's also one of the reasons that we talk about mm-hmm. where we're finding this. You know? Right. If you go to the blog... Um, I don't know. It, a lot of you just have this on your phones and you listen every week. But if you go to the article associated with this on the blog, uh, you will find that we've listed out a bunch of those articles that we we got this from. So yeah, that if you, you can Herb read Car- it for yourself. Like Herb Cardiel used to say, if you're scurrying at home, okay, it's a 643 double play. Right. If you want to know, it's right there on the blog, what yep. we're reading at that time. And and I, I would also say a lot of shows, the beginning... Is one of, is one of my favorite parts yeah. where we get non political and blah blah blah. And I don't know if, um, you know, I, I I take it as a compliment when people say we're funny or we're entertaining and all that. But because you have you can't be boring and do this. Right. There's too much competition. Somebody sitting there and can click and it, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's kind of like having a thousand channels. Right. If you <laughs> and you have Hulu and Flixnet and all that stuff. I mean, it, you're just gonna you just get off it immediately. But I always say this. Um, I don't think I'm that funny of a person. Okay? And you're not funny at all. But. Wow. 
no, but I mean, okay. It takes. Um, I, I haven't shared this very often, but there was a time I wanted to no, try. No, keep talking about this, really. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to hear more about this. I'm not funny. <laughs> there was I'm just I'm giving you crap here, but there was a time I had a had an inkling to try stand up comedy. Yes, I never did do it. Not because I was afraid. I'm not afraid to go in front of an audience. Right. I've been booed before. I've been not <laughs> afraid to us on a weekly basis. Right. I'm not afraid of that. Yeah. But I am not good. And maybe this is what separates an actor, or you know, what I am not good at at. Coming up with a shtick and trying to memorize it, and I, I can't do that. Some people can do that great, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't think I could be Jay Leno and stand there and read jokes and, you know, that are predetermined. And maybe the audience isn't with it. Maybe they are. And uh, to me, I have to have. I don't want to say a foil. I don't think of you as a foil. Right. I have to have a partner to play off of. You know, like I think about the beginning is. I, I get asked about the songs a lot. Yeah. And how I, you know, the, how did you start? I don't even know. I don't even have an answer to how we started that. But a great <laughs> example of, it's a great example of where where something organically comes together. You're a music guy. You know everything about music. You come up with, with a song that, that mirrors the topic. But it wouldn't be funny if, you know, the last CD I bought was, wasn't you know Bill Haley in the comments? I mean, it's funny because of the it relates to the topic, and because I don't know who the hell it is, you know. Right. So it's like we, it's like yeah, that's the kind of comedy, and it's not intentional all the time either. It's not always right. trying to be funny. Very rarely do we ever <laughs> yeah. write bits. Yeah. You know, it, it's happened, but it, it's it's you know, happened. It's, it's rare in 161 yeah. shows. It's happened a handful of times. Yeah. But we really don't do that. It's sort of uh, your time. I don't know if you and I can. I don't. I can't read other people's minds a lot. But for some reason, you and I can read each other's. Mm-hmm. And you start talking, and I think it's something funny. <laughs> yeah. Or you start, you know, you, you start saying something, or I mispronounce something, and you start giggling. You know, there's there's that that uh. just organically happens. So no, the beginning is is. You know, a lot of times what we'll do is you'll say to me or I'll say to you, hey, the opening, I got to go with me. Mm-hmm. Just go with yeah. me. And I, I think of my favorite ones, you know, like the one where, you know, I saw The Hangover 11 years after it came out and thought it was new. And then we talked about sequels. Remember that? We talked yeah. about movie sequels we hated. Yeah. And you hated The Phantom Menace and I hated Rocky Five, And we... we <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. had a little discussion about I mean, it happens. So I mean, I want people to know that that I won't say everything is a hundred percent unscripted because we do have a game plan yeah. sometimes. But no, the show is not. You and I together are organically funny. Yeah. It's just organic. It happens. You know, you're making fun of me because I don't know. I don't know anything about music. I'm making fun of you for dating Nancy Pelosi. All right, so I mean, it just it just goes. I I'm sorry. I know you dumped her for Diane Feinstein. I'm sorry. Okay, so, but <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah. yeah, you're the funny one. Boy. <laughs> no, or or you know, one of my other favorites was when we talked about the uh, the. Uh, Sitcom theme music. Yes. Because I knew you were going to answer Dukes of Hazard, which right. is in my top five. Right. But so, you know, by the way, by the way, has anybody watched? You follow John Schneider on Twitter? Ah, uh, maybe. You really need to. Yeah. Bo Duke. You yeah. really need to follow him. He has some great videos about uh, um, explaining rights mm-hmm. and things like that and, and the whole General Lee controversy, which. I, I still don't really get, but right. um, he has some appear. He's done some appearances on the news and things like that. Very interesting person to follow. If you're not following Schneider on Twitter, mm-hmm. I think he really he's a good person to follow. So. Absolutely, maybe yeah. better than the Iron Sheik. I don't know if anything's better than Sheik. <laughs> <laughs> I put coronavirus in yes. in camel clutch <laughs> and f this and f that. Gene oh. Mean. Intelligent Jew like yourself? (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. Speaking of uh, putting things in the camel clutch, okay. our, All our, right. so, our state has been uh, put a little pressure on the governor this week. The he's been in a weeks. he's been in a camel clutch, sharpshooter, sleeper, Hogan leg drop. <laughs> That's what he's been in for a while. Andre the Giant bear hug. Yes. King Kong Bundy avalanche. You just keep going. Yes. You know. Uh, yeah. The Tito Santana flying jalapeno. He's been in all of that for yes. a while. Yeah, uh, I can't say I feel sorry for him whatsoever. Uh, you know, he's kind of brought this on himself. I mean, uh, when you look at the, how bad the testing rates are, and here's what we're going to do, and you're falling short by thousands of tests every day, and, you know, you, you don't seem to know where you're going, and you're, we'll talk about it maybe later. Your modeling is made up by uh, recent graduates of the university. There, there's and, definitely models I'd rather yeah. look at than that one, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Now, let me just yeah. say this, Jay. I mean, um, you hit the nail on the head about, I think the uncertainty has been, and I get nobody's got a crystal ball. And this is all new. It is, but, but, but it's, not, learning. it's not new anymore. And right. that's where I, and I'd like to know, there's two problems. I mean, we had David Strom on, and if you, if you want, a couple of weeks ago, if you want to listen to, he really, I think really delved into the problem with testing and mm-hmm. why it's head scratching. But remember, here in Minnesota, we're still only testing people who are symptomatic. Right. There are no serology tests happening right now. I don't think so. And if there no. are, I'm not hearing results. And to me, that's more important. Right. Because finding out how many people have had it in our mm-hmm. asymptom... It, I mean, look, here's the thing. If you're, if you're, if you're feeling with quote-unquote flu-like symptoms, and that's a big list of what that could be, you got two choices. Yes. Stay home for two weeks or take a test. We know that now. I mean, I don't see why that's so important that you have to do that. But the serology test, whether you've had it and didn't know it, maybe you were asymptomatic and you you <laughs> could have unknowingly, uh-huh. you know. I mean, that and, and knowing if, if 20, 30 percent of people have already had it. You know, here's what I don't understand. Why don't they say, hey, look, let's have 5,000 volunteers randomly come in. We'll, we'll take X amount of men, X amount of women, X amount of minority. You want to get everybody, like you're right. doing a poll. Take 5,000 people to volunteer. Let's give it all to them. Mm-hmm. But what if 30% come back? That they've had, I mean, that to me is much more valuable than, well, I got symptoms. I guess I better go take a test. Right. Uh, it's... I, you're, it's too late when you already have symptoms. Yeah. So the whole testing thing has been confusing to me as to why we're so concerned about that. Testing capacity is very different than testing, you know. But to me, the serology test and it's got no coverage. I mean, where is where is the the um, here was one thing, too, that's not gotten any coverage. Alex Berenson is the one who broke this story yeah. about a week ago about the one of the JBS plants down in Worthington. 1,200 people tested positive down there. 90% of them were asymptomatic. Wow. And actually, there were like 3,000 people tested, by the way. So 60% didn't even test positive. Wow. But yeah. 90% were asymptomatic. And like 100 out of 1,200 or something... Mm-hmm. Had symptoms, had a statement, and there's been no deaths. Right. Okay, now, I take that as good news. It's good news that 90% are asymptomatic. It's good news that nobody died. Mm-hmm. No, I think there's like one person in an ICU bed out of that entire plant. Yes. You know, that had the break uh, about a month ago. So, I mean, or maybe it wasn't even that long ago. So. To me, that information is much more valuable, much more important. You can draw a lot of conclusions by that. Yeah, you can't draw them all. But you know what? I'm tired of hearing, we don't know anything about this virus. Okay? If you don't know anything, why the hell are we locked down for two months? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know anything, why are we coming out right now? I mean, you can't. You can't. None of that makes sense. Look, nothing makes sense. Okay? Nothing makes sense that we've done. Yeah. Not a thing. The lockdown at all didn't make sense. Because to me, if you would have just, and this is just, uh, look, I, I'm not an epidemiologist, okay? Right. I'm not, I don't know everything. But to me, if you would have just implemented 
guidelines and uh, changed a few things in retrospect, you wouldn't have the economic damage that we have. Mm -hmm. And we've had people have get cases and deaths even on lockdown. Yeah. New York's been on lockdown for two months. They've had 30,000 deaths. Well, I mean, they're genius of a governor keeps sending sick people to the nursing homes. Oh, he's America's governor right now, Jay. Don't you know that? You can't criticize him. Yeah. Well, I just did. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I agree. But yeah, I mean, well, I mean, look, he was clearly overwhelmed and I, I, I guess I can't blame him for that. Maybe he was just following the Tim Walls playbook. Maybe, but, but I mean, they didn't do some of the simplest things there, like clean the subways and, and, you know, take care of the nursing homes. And 66% of the deaths there have been people at home. Remember yeah. when that came out? It wasn't people who were, who were interacting, at, at kissing at the park or whatever. I mean, it wasn't, that's not how it was contracted. And I think those facts have been, look, we know who's at risk for this. Yes. Okay, we know who it is. It's yeah. older folks. It's people who uh, have certain health conditions, diabetes, asthma, any type of lung problem. Uh, they're the same people who are susceptible to the flu. Yeah. This is more severe than that. Uh, it is. But, I mean, to me, it's like we're locking children out of school. And I, I, I'm standing here going, you know, Children have immunity systems that a lot of adults don't have. Right. And they have energy and they have, you know, I mean, I, I've been perplexed as to how we fought this from day one. And here's the other thing. You can't get herd immunity on lockdown. No way. It's impossible. Um, and I think Sweden has proven that although they may have had more cases in the short run, mm-hmm. in the long run, they're going to have less. Probably. Yeah. So, you know, and look, not wanting the hospitals to be overrun is a legitimate concern. No question about it. Yeah. But, you know, we, we went through two months where you know, a woman couldn't get a mammogram. Mm-hmm. Nobody could get a colonoscopy. How many times have we talked about early detection and in, in health right. I couldn't go to the eye doctor. I needed new contacts, Jay. Seeing is pretty essential to me. Yeah. You know, when I had to order, I, I think I mentioned this on the show, but I had to order them from 1-800-CONTACTS. Uh-huh. They wouldn't take my insurance or don't take insurance. I had to pay it out of my pocket. Uh-huh. Um, I need an exam. and could get one because my prescription's two years old. And I can mm-hmm. tell, especially when I'm driving at night, I feel like I can tell that I need an update. Yeah. I have toric lenses because I have astigmatism in my left eye. Mm. So it's not so simple for me. But you know what? I can't drive and work. I can't cook. I can't do anything if I can't see. That's true. <laughs> so we, how does somebody label that non-essential? I mean, the, how are, look, when we talk about Minnesota, okay, let's get back just a second to Minnesota. Yeah. A week ago, now this tells you how little science this is based on. A week ago, you and I sat here. Remember we talked about graduations and how you couldn't have a graduation party in your right, backyard? Right, And Walls is up there trying to figure out how we could do that. <laughs> I'm going, what? <laughs> so we went from that a week ago yeah. okay, to all of a sudden now, yeah. uh, uh, retail stores are going to open on yeah. the 18th. <laughs> how did we go from you can't have a graduation ceremony in a football? Ball field. Yeah. I mean, because I all let you in. Armstrong High School, from my sources, was planning on having a ceremony in late July. Mm-hmm. They were going to wait. They were going to have it at the football field. Every graduate could bring two guests. And they were going to have you in the, they could sit in the stands. They could yeah. bring their own chairs. You got 120 yards, if you include the end zones. Of mm-hmm. Plenty of, wait, I know there's like five or 600 graduates. Yeah. So you're looking at 1,500 people, but on a football field in stands, you tell me you can't sit six feet apart. Oh, exactly. And you couldn't do that in late July a week ago. But now, all of a sudden, we can go to retail stores as of the 18th. We yes. can. We think everything's going to open on the 1st with some modifications, right. probably. The stay-at-home order, which nobody's following anyway, is over. <laughs> so 
What changed in a week, Jay? It's worse than that, Andrew. Uh, I, it's worse than that. There were I, I was reading and doing research yesterday. And so you told me well, you were working. Sorry, two days ago. <laughs> well, this this is part of my job. I, yes. I know. <laughs> yes. Remember, we're funny here. Yes. I got to be that, funny. That's all right. You can keep tearing me down. <laughs> I'll be all right. Hey, don't uh, kick me again underneath the table. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, two days ago, um, I was looking, and today it's Thursday when we're recording this. Uh, Tuesday, I was looking, and. Everybody was reporting all indications are going to be that Governor Walls is going to extend the stay-at-home order. May 31st was the arbitrary date. And it was all because of that model was mm-hmm. part of it. But, but one day, 24 hours later, you have reporters coming out. It looks like uh, he's going to lift the stay-at-home order. Yeah. What changed in, in <laughs> what scientifically changed in a matter of 24 hours to go from he's going to keep it in place to he's going to lift it? Well, the earth tilted on its axis 10%. That's why. No, I don't know. I, it, it, I mean, there's no explanation for that in science. There's plenty of explanation for that in political persuasion. Well, and it's politics and it's feedback from constituents. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's I think... Three things were factors. Again, none of them scientific. One was the graduation stuff. I think right. you pissed off, not you, but they pissed off a lot of people. I mean, every here's the other thing that pissed me off about that. Everything they want to do, they got a plan for three weeks. Yes. You notice that? Well, we'll think about you sports. We'll let you know in June. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. You know, how hard does it? Does it really take three weeks to figure out how to get kids to play basketball or soccer? I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I don't. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but the uh, whole issue of graduations and telling people they can't have a graduation party. That's, quote, not allowed was what, mm-hmm. what's her name said. Yeah. The fake doctor, right. who's not a doctor, who's a political appointee, Jan yes. Malcolm. She's a political appointee. That's what, exactly it. And um, they say, well, you know, that's just not allowed. We're, we're going to try to figure. We don't know how. We don't know how you can do it. You know, we don't know how you can. You can't set a picnic table here and a picnic table there. And maybe well, grandma and grandpa shouldn't well, go if they're not comfortable. Okay. There are problems solved, right? Yeah. Let me tell you how it's done. This is my property. Yeah. I own it. Yeah. I get to decide what I want to do on my private property, but out. How about that? Yeah. That works for me. Hey, that's two I'm, weeks in I'm, a row you've had that logic. Too. I'm not a moron. Yeah. I can figure out how to do it safely. Yeah, exactly. Well, Shut do you, up. Do you really want to? Really Here's my thing. Yeah. Do you really think somebody hosting a graduation party wants to infect their relatives and their, and their friends? Of course friends? they do. Of course they do. That's why we need this order. Please put us back under lockdown. Yeah, every, I can't decide for myself. Everything will be BYOB at every party. You know? I mean, I mean, it's just kind of like, do you really think that? But we, but but that, that there was a huge negative reaction to that. Yes. And I'm going to tell you two other things. One, I love the place. Mm-hmm. I've been there once on my way to Rochester. It was a super cool place. Yeah, but that candy store opening oh. went. Oh. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen anything so universally. I mean, I've never seen anything shut Democrats' mouths for th- this much for any period of time. Yeah. But you couldn't get anybody mm-hmm. to defend that decision. Now. Believe me, if anyone's going to tell you a candy store is essential, it's me. Yeah, me too. It's but, a great, it's a super cool place. But <laughs> right. when you're giving special favors to your friends, you know. There's you're rumors not ex- about that, yeah. You're that, not, ex- well, he, he is a friend of, of the governor. and In District 1, where, of yeah, course, Governor Walls is in Congress. So, what you And there's do? nothing I, wrong with supporting who you want for office. That's your First yeah, Amendment right. That's but, great. But the you log- should not get special favors for it. Yes, the logic of I have a candy store, but if somebody had a candy store in a different city and it was smaller, yeah. they couldn't open. Mm-hmm. If somebody had a gift shop or an antique store, yeah. they couldn't open. Nothing, nothing, 
there's nothing you could say to defend that decision. No. And I think it was from that point, it was like, a few. I'm going to open if I want to open. Mm-hmm. Cities started acting like <laughs> we're oh going to we're going to pass. I mean, County McLeod County passed a resolution unanimously. I mean, yeah. it set off something that I I first off it was totally foreseeable. Right. And it was just a very stupid move. And I'll tell you the other thing, Jay. Mm-hmm. I. Remember the whole thing last week about the fishing opener? Oh, oh, oh. Gas up at home. Don't gas up up All north. Right. You know, we, we, oh, we're opening the resorts, but don't stay at them. You right. Know? <laughs> we're opening the campgrounds, but you can't as, stay there. Only go as far as one tank of gas to take. Yeah. That's it. Fish, but <laughs> too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, I drove because I didn't go up for the opener. I'm going yeah. up this weekend, but I I don't go up for the opener anymore. Yeah. Um, I drove over six. I had to run to Maple Grove to do something on Friday afternoon. I took six ten and then Maple Grove Parkway yeah. over from the office from Champlin over. I went over Highway ninety four. Yeah. I looked down. And everybody heading toward Rogers, everybody going north. Yeah. What do you want to bet what the cars looked like? Bumper to bumper, everybody going five miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Nobody listened. No. Nobody cared. No. Everybody said, you know what? I'm, I'll see ya. <laughs> I'm out of here. And like I mentioned before, yeah. I mean, my wife and I had gone to a state park two weeks ago. And the place was, I had never been to a state park and was so busy before. Hmm. And again, I mean, and the governor kind of pouted about that last night. Right. And I'm like, hey, buddy, um, who said go outside, get exercise? State parks are open. Oh, all of a sudden people show up and you're pissed about it? Mm-hmm. They got enough. They got nowhere else to go. Right. It's 75 degrees two weeks ago where it was really nice. And it's kind of like, oh, we're, we're went from, we got a D in our, our <laughs> spying on people's cell phones. And I'm like, <laughs> but I think those three things made it a reality that this is over. Yeah. Walls can say what he wants. A little twerp can pound his desk. But this is, this is done. Right. Nobody's listening. You've got Memorial Weekend coming up. People are not going. It's because we're supposed to be. Well, right now we know how weather forecasters are, but it's supposed to be nice, and nobody's staying home. So yeah. you can give an order if you want to, but it's obvious nobody's following it. I don't care what they tell pollsters. I, I don't know if there are people. Are, I don't know who's being polled. I don't know if they're telling people what they want to hear. I don't know. It. I can't make it out. But I got to judge actions, not words. And what I see yeah. is the people declared it was over. That's what I saw. Well, and, you know, we had cities and we ca- and counties and, and businesses. Uh, there's a website that I sent you the other day, uh, the rise of com, which listed a whole bunch of businesses in Minnesota that ones that were willing to be listed. And I'm sure there are plenty oh, more yeah, that, there are. that didn't know about this or that w- didn't want to be listed that are opening as well. These are all businesses that are listing and are opening and they're all over the place. Uh, I, I guess, you know, I could read these off there. It's public information, but well, I, I'm not going to bring, you know, uh, you know, if they don't know about it. I'm yeah. I mean, our worldwide yeah. audience, you can just tell them the website. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's awesome because I mean, there's all these businesses that are like, you know, what? Eh, we're going to open and it's everything. I mean, you have, um, you have everything from, but bars and, and restaurants that said we're going to open no matter what, all the way to thrift stores and antiques and candy stores that didn't get to open oh. with the other one. And uh, they only get one cavity there instead fitness. of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, what happened to supporting the little guy? Well, exactly. What happened to that? I mean, why are the, why are the? I mean, again, I you can't get a straight answer out of anybody as to why. Uh, uh, you know, a cashier at Holiday is an essential employee, mm-hmm. and a cashier at a candy store is not. Right. They do the same job. The candy store probably has less people traffic-wise in a day. Right. So, I mean, I realize you can't close it. People need gas. I, I get that. Mm-hmm. But it's arbitrary. All of this is arbitrary. Yeah. So, uh, the whole thing, has, I mean, and you know... 
<laughs> I, I am not in favor of this phased in opening and I don't know how I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how you can open something at 50% capacity and police that. I don't know how that's going to work. Do, do you got you know the mall cop at the door, you know, <laughs> counting heads? Do, I mean, yeah. do, do you turn away? Who's going to turn away? What bar is going to turn away one of their norm, their norms, or Cliff Clavens? Right. Say no, you can't come in here. We got 50%. 51 will kill somebody. Right. I mean. I, there have been a bunch of really odd things with this. It's like we have to shut down earlier at night because we all know that the virus is more active at night. <laughs> you know, we, it's, we have it's to, uh, Freddy Krueger right. <laughs> and uh, Mike Myers carry it. They come out after dark. <sighs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's things like this that have been completely irrational all the way through. And I. It, it just adds to the confusion and people's frustration and, and why this has happened. Because make no mistake about it. I mean, people were at the point where just like, we're done. I don't care what yeah, the governor and, says, we're but, done. But again, understand the governor has to take a lot of blame for that because oh, yeah. he's the one who shut us down, mm -hmm. wouldn't give us any information, wouldn't tell us what his criteria was. Went on and on about testing, which has nothing to do with opening. I mean, mm -hmm. you can ramp up testing and still open at the same time. You know, wouldn't give any dates. I mean, if he'd have made the speech last night, if he'd have made that speech a month ago, mm -hmm. I think people would have said, okay, okay, this is opening here, this is opening here. Because this is what the governor of Indiana did this. Mm -hmm. I can't think of his name, but he had a whole timeline all the way through July 1st where everything's open 100%. Yes. Um, but okay, we're going to phase in this. These are opening on May 15th. These are opening on May 31st. The, I mean, it's not the, not the way I would have done it, but mm -hmm. at least if I owned one of those businesses or I was employed there, I, okay, two more weeks and this is over. Right. But to indefinitely like, sit there you and... Have business owners guessing and it's like for for restaurants and, and places you know other places that maybe need to order inventory when do i order that? yeah there's a meat shortage when, yeah on top of it right it's, drive, uh, go to a wendy's drive through there's stuff crossed oh, off the menu word yeah it, it's it's ridiculous and we're going to open up malls but we're not really going to open up churches 10 or less <laughs> you have people walking everywhere in the mall and touching everything and grocery stores, bathrooms, and whatever. And in a, a church, you could have, you know, you can easily, people kind of stay in their seats. You put them safely distanced. It, it doesn't make any sense. And then they're telling people it. You can't sing in church because because singing you might spit on somebody and get them sick. And it is, what? Yeah. I have no problem not singing, but well, <laughs> I've heard you. No, yeah. just no well, no well. All right, I won't sing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yes. Where do you? And here's the other thing. Where do you come up with ten people? What What's the science behind ten people in a in a fairly large you yeah. know uh, church? Paul or whatever you call them. I mean, yeah. what is what is the logic behind that? Well, and here's the thing. Um, I had read that the Catholic Church, all of their bishops decided that we're opening whether he opens or not. Yeah. On the, as of the 18th, we're resuming Mass. And we're going to go with 30% capacity. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, scale back some things. And, you know, we're, we're going to do this safely. And we're going to offer communion. Again, whatever, again, but, do, do you think the churches want to hurt their members? No. So why don't we trust them to just do this and implement this and they can gradually... Over time, right. once everybody feels, and again, everybody may not come out the first Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're 80 years old, you may not want to go. And they're encouraging people to, to stay home yes. if, if you are you know, a, more vulnerable. And a lot of them are still offering virtual services mm -hmm. at this time. But, but I mean, if I, have, if I have a dozen families yeah. who want to go to church, why can't you get 12 pews, mm -hmm. seat them six feet apart, and have one family in each yeah. pew? If, if you have a capacity for, say, 250 people in your sanctuary. Um, sanctuary, that was the word I couldn't yeah. think of. Uh, why? I mean, really, 10 people? <laughs> 10 people. That could be one family. 10 people. <laughs> that means 25 people 
can't come for everyone that or 24 people can't come for every one that can. Now, does, right? that, it, does that include the minister and the organ player and Supposed the to. person who <laughs> says, says the psalms? Yeah. And, you know. it, it, but it, it's stupid. So you can have one family at a time. <laughs> That's pretty much Every family it. Family gets to <laughs> they get their own personal service. Yeah. Well, bless make you, Johnson. Come it, on, who's, make who's it a, next? Make an appointment. <laughs> who's the, oh, you guys got to break up into two. You guys yeah, should have yeah. taken more care. That's right. We got four people running this thing. You got eight people in the family. Yeah. You you, you got to come at two different times. Yeah. You know, yeah. You got five kids. <laughs> Each parent's got to take a couple You're out of different. Out of you got to stay for two services. <laughs> yeah, keep um, your offerings and get out of here. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous. And then you got places like River Valley Church, which is one of the larger churches yes. in the state down um, in in the southeast metro. And uh, I mean, I would assume they they have a thousand people come through there and. Ten. A lot of services they yeah. offer on yeah yeah like night services Friday and, Saturday multiple yeah. services on Sunday Sunday night yeah and and you're gonna let ten people come in at a time <laughs> ten ten yeah <laughs> like I said but hey everybody crowd into the ball it'll take it'll take two months for them to have one service because everybody <laughs> will have to come in at different. <laughs> Everybody come to the mall. But I'd like to know who comes up with yeah. ten people as as some arbitrary number, and that eleven is going to kill somebody. Right. Where, where do you get it's that like, from? And you got people uh, who live in the city. You can only have ten people to your graduation party, and then you got yeah, the guy out on uh, Elmer's farm out in you know some some township, and and he can only have ten people on a forty fifty acre farm. Stupid. Yeah, and then they'll probably limit yeah. the cows and horses too. They they need to go to another part of the <laughs> other part of the farm. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I the, the thing I come back to is how is this enforceable? I mean, yeah. there's no way you can walk into every hair salon and, and look. You can make reasonable compromises and just say, hey, look, try to limit your walk-in appointments. You know, only have enough barbers. That are needed. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody can come back. If, if the employee's not ready to come back, let them sit out for another week if they're not comfortable. I think, right. I think you got to work with people. Um, there are, but I mean, again, these businesses do not want to kill their employees and their customers. No. And look, look no further than Georgia and South Dakota. Three weeks ago, you could not watch CNN or PMSNBC without Brian Kemp and Christy Noam being the two worst being Hitler and Mussolini. Right. Okay? You turn them on now, you don't see a word about them. Mm-hmm. By the way, do you know George's cases are decreasing oh, every yeah. day? They're the lowest that they've been. <laughs> what? Florida, too. Think about all the elderly people in Florida. Oh, I know. Now, Governor DeSantis just got reamed back in March. And not anymore. No. Nobody's saying one word about what's going <laughs> on. That's all you have to do. What no. are they doing there? So... Why isn't that what we? And I'm not a big best practices guy. Yeah, but me neither. Why can't you look there and say in North Dakota they opened everything May first? Yep. Everybody's been crossing the border. You live in Moorhead. Everybody's been getting drunk in Fargo. I mean, yeah. All you got to do is, and you haven't seen what the doomsday people projected. You got Georgia opened out three weeks ago. Okay, if if we were going to see a spike. We'd have seen one by now, and we mm-hmm. still may see peaks and valleys. Yeah, because there can be hot spots, and there can be, but it, but the hot spots have been long term care facilities. They've been they've been pre, they're now predictable. I think. Yes. I mean, you know where the the you know who's vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And but I, going forward, I I just I'm flabbergasted at how we're acting like uh, we're gonna we have casualties. We're gonna retake Omaha Beach. And I, I don't I don't know where this is coming from. Right. I mean, if you, if you want to get into Minnesota's model a little bit, <laughs> I'm not talking about what's her name. I'm talking about the model model yeah. that predicts more deaths. Here, first off, here's what I love. I love a model that predicts 1,700 to 44,000 deaths. Now, mm-hmm. Jay, let me ask you something. If you wanted some work done on your house, yeah. and the estimate was seventeen hundred dollars to forty four thousand, how fast <laughs> would you tell that person to get lost? Immediately. Yes. I mean, what? What is that? <laughs> we should get jobs as weathermen. I mean, what? 
What? Uh, what is that? <laughs> but I, mean, I yeah. saw that the other day, and I just went, "All right," you know. And it's look, it's clear. Walls doesn't believe it. Yeah. If he did, there's no way he'd be doing what he's doing. Right. I mean, if he really thought, I mean, 44,000 deaths, which is 13,000 more, by the way, than they have in New York, right. which is like the biggest hotspot in the world. Right. I mean, the entire world. That would be 121 deaths a day starting on April 28th mm -hmm. when this model was really finished. Right. Okay. Now, the worst day we've had in Minnesota is 29. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what would have to happen. Yeah. Every day, because this model goes out 12 months, which I, we can't predict this next week, but right. we somehow can predict 12 months. So in an, on its face, it should just be laughed at. Like, what? come on, get serious. Now, look, we're not done. Right. With cases, and unfortunately, we're not done with people passing away. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the truth. Yeah, this thing is here to stay for a while. Uh, but it might burn out in the summer. I, yeah, and I still think it'll burn out in the summer for the most part. For the most that's part. That's just me. <clears throat> Even if it doesn't, we've built up the uh -huh. capacity to take it now. Right. So, um, but 44,000. Yeah, um, and I know um, looking at the, the modeling. There was, uh, let's see. You could, I'm tired of looking at it. I, I just think well, it's, we waited three weeks and $1.5 million for this. I, I just think it's, it's amazing because uh, some of the people that were doing some of this modeling were recent graduates of the U of M. Uh, that's right. I mean, they don't have a lot of real world experience. One just got their. Uh, their... A lot of these doctors don't. I mean, the yeah. doomsday doctors always play out worst case scenarios. But what I mean which... is, like, someone just got their bachelor's yeah. in mathematics. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that. Like. I want, I want them to give me the Pythagorean theorem and prove that they've got a doctorate in mathematics. Oh, boy. I don't know. Something over 4 AC. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> B squared or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I go through this and and they don't seem to know anything either. Uh, there was one scenario where the death toll could have reached seventy four thousand, and that was with an April twenty sixth peak, and then something about a June twenty ninth peak, and the projected deaths in the fifty to fifty five thousand range, and it would. You know, here's the thing about a yeah. quote peak. Is that a peak in cases, in deaths? Um, in... Yeah, uh, that's a good question. But but I mean, now they're projecting that we won't peak until the end of uh, what was it? Was July it 29th was July. what I thought. Now, yeah. Come on, I mean, you know, let and, me just say and this: if we're not going to peak till the end of July. Why are we releasing everything? Why are we opening everything because up? Because nobody believes it. Two reasons: yes. one, nobody believes it; two, we can't control anybody anymore. Right. Three, the DFL's getting hammered, and their reps are getting hammered. And I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Yeah. If he wouldn't have started lifting things, I think the next time he tried to extend this, June 12th, yeah. I think it had gotten voted down. Possible. I really do. I really yeah. think all it takes is seven... Democratic House members mm -hmm. concerned about their reelection. There's probably 30 of them that are. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it might have got. I mean, I think there's been behind the scenes talk. Like I said, I think Walls has been in a in a room somewhere talking to three people. I don't mm -hmm. think he really has. I think he's he's listening. Three or four people have his ear, and I don't really think anybody else does. It's this. Nurses union rep and mm -hmm. this person and the economic director. I really don't Education think Minnesota. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he's really come out of that shell. He says he's talked to these people, but I, I just I can't buy it based on his reactions. Right. The Democratic reps, on the other hand, <laughs> are hearing it firsthand. Cities in their district are saying, "Screw you, we're going to open anyway." Mm -hmm. 
And they had to have communicated that to him and said, look, what do you want us to tell these people? Yeah. You're not giving us any info. And I mean, but seriously, I mean, yeah. of course, they could vote it down. I mean, that's ultimately what they could do. I just don't think they, they were at that point yet, but I think they were close. And right. I think it was like, okay, you better start you know, going further with this, turn your stupid 1920s radio dials, or you know, yeah. you're gonna. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, he's got these dials. There's like no benchmarks that you're trying to hit. Uh, it, it's just it, whims, you know. It, going back to this modeling thing, I mean, there's a quote from from one of these uh, one of the models students. One yes. of the models. We got, a, we got a, one, one of the models. Uh, this is great. This is indicative of how this whole process has gone. I don't think a lot of researchers get to work on something over the weekend and have public figures talk about it and make decisions based on it. Or, yeah, based on it three days later. Yeah, that's right. Because there's usually a lot of errors in it. Yeah, usually, usually you don't take three days to decide the course of your state. Usually, you don't have a 24-hour period of. Uh, it looks like he's going to keep it shut down. Oh, guess what? We're opening up. Surprise! Merry Christmas. <laughs> No, it, 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 so that, this has been the way things have gone. It, it's all about whims and, and about feelings and, and political polls. And it, none of this is based on science. Right, but you're right. It is based on, and look, the whole, I've said this before and we said this weeks ago. This is only going to work until the people decide it's not. And um, I think people were willing to shut down for a very short amount of time. Yeah. To quote, remember, go back to Walls of Speech, March 25th. We're going to flatten the curve and we're going to build up the hospital beds. Do you know, Jay, we accomplished that in this state about five weeks ago? Yeah. It was right around Easter time. Well, that was the whole idea of the shutdown to begin with, to make sure that we had enough beds available. And that's a legitimate concern, by the way. Well, yeah, I'm, you don't want to overrun the hospitals. I get that. But people were willing to do it. Okay, we'll do it for two weeks. Then it gets extended. Okay, we'll do it for two more. No one signed up for an indefinite shutdown to mm -hmm. last for months and months and months. That's right. not what we were told. No. And so I think that's where it got, and you started to see the simmering, and you started to see protests. You started to see it in other states. Yeah. And you know, before you know it, I mean, you either start, or you're going to have a Michigan on your hands. Mm -hmm. you're or gonna have a, you're gonna, a Michigan or a Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to get overthrown if yeah. you don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that, that the governor has been very out of touch. I don't know if he's in touch now, or he just realizes his authority. And look, here's the other thing. You talk about the cities and counties. Yeah. <clears throat> Walls's orders are worthless without law enforcement. We yep. mentioned this previously. He doesn't control sheriff's offices. Sheriffs are elected. They have the same That's certificate true. he does. Yep. Okay. He doesn't control local police departments. That is city councils right. directing their city administrator. They're the ones in control. So he can make an order that something can't be open. But he can't go and enforce it. No. So. <laughs> Is he going to send state troopers everywhere? I, there's you'd not have to. Of them. There's not enough of them to do Minneapolis. <laughs> well. I mean, so, I mean, I mean, well, forget Minneapolis. There isn't enough to do. You don't have you don't have millions of state troopers, and their job is to be on the highways. Absolutely. That's their job. Yeah, and you can't abandon that and just say, "Oh well, I don't care if somebody drives two hundred miles an hour and tips over. <laughs> I'm going to go make sure this barber doesn't open." I mean, you can't do that. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. his I, maybe he's finally realizing that because I don't think he would do this. I don't think his. I think he wanted no. to keep us shut down through June. I really do. I think that I think this whole thing about a peak has been an excuse to yeah. extend this. And I don't think he's doing it because he wants to. I think he's doing it because he's being pushed to do it. Yeah. And he's getting sued. And, I mean, it, it's a mess. But it's a mess that the governor largely helped create for himself. Now, mm -hmm. look, going forward here, I mean, you mentioned Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin's got... So, uh, some minor differences in their constitutions. Yes. The session's supposed to end next week, Jay. Mm -hmm. 
We all know what happens in the legislature. We all know that everything gets done in the last two days. That's right. Uh, the governor mentioned that, and he's quite pissed about it. I agree with him on that because I, I hate omnibus bills. I hate hodgepodging stuff at the yeah. end. Yeah. I wish he would veto that stuff. I wish Governor Pawlenty would veto that stuff. I wish Governor Dayton yeah. would veto that stuff. I mean, you really haven't had a governor really take no. a stand against if that. If I was a governor, I would say veto. You put it all in separate bills, and you vote on them separately. I'm not signing this. Yes, and it's not fair on a bonding bill where you need 60% of the yeah. vote, and other bills you don't need 60% of the vote. Right. So you stuff a bunch of crap in a bonding bill. Yeah. Okay, and remember, the governor does have the line item veto. That is one thing he does have. Right. But if you veto one thing and not another, or you know, you end up in a conference committee, it's a mess. And I, I wish, when I'm governor, I'm going to veto all of it <clears throat> and send them back and say, you send me this crap again, I'll shut you down for his, you know, yeah. I'll take the crap public. But, you know, here's the thing. Remember how... Just a week ago, the Republicans in the House were not going to... Because you take 60% to have a bonding bill. Yes. They have the votes to say no. And, of course, the Senate mm -hmm. can say no to anything. Right. What are the odds now that Walls is, quote, opening the state? Right. There's, of course, caveats to that. That a bonding bill of excess of $2 billion... <laughs> Which is just, I mean, that's just nothing. That falls out, of, falls out of my pocket when I'm walking down the street. Yeah. What are the odds that gets passed now? Are enough people going to get bought off? Because that's what a bonding bill is all about. Right. Is saying, hey, we'll take care of your water project or your university mm. or your community college if you, if you go along with this. Are we going to see a bonding bill next week? Oh, I'm sure. It, it might get pushed to a special session just because, you know. That'll last an hour. Right, 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 <laughs> you know. But <laughs> with all of this coronavirus stuff, it, it's possible it'll go to a special session, but it, it'll pass. They always pass. They'll figure out what the right formula is, wh how much crap are the Republicans willing to take in order to be able to pass it, and it'll pass. So for the 49th year in a row, we got the same scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, coming out about the Bonnie Bill. Don't yeah. worry, folks. We'll break it down in a future episode, like we did last year <laughs> and the year before and the yeah. year before. We'll break because I mean, all the crap on it won't be known until June mm -hmm. or later. Because if you have a special session, it has to happen after the twentieth. Yeah, probably will happen the week after that, and you know they'll probably be done by June first. But you all know it's June twentieth before we see what's in it. So, right. I mean, and, and here's the thing, and I tweeted about this earlier in the week. Uh, at C O M M Solutions M N. If for those of you uh, following along, yeah, for you tweeters. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is ridiculous. When we're looking at this situation that we're in, and our economy is in the toilet. And jobs, uh, so many people don't have jobs. Pe some people, a good deal of people, have lost them permanently. Uh, but we'll find that out in the next few months. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to borrow $2 billion and expect people in this state to pay that back over the next plus couple interest. of decades. Plus yeah. interest. It, it, it's ridiculous. And it should not happen in this I'm sorry. We don't need to to put in some state aid roads in in War Road and 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 you know build a an interpretive center in in uh, uh, Hoochie Coochie Park over in Kuching Kuching Co County. Kuching County. And it, it, Beautiful country up there. We don't need to do that right now. We need to shore up our economy because I'm telling you this. Listen to me closely, especially those of you affiliated with cities, counties, school districts. We are in for a long road to recovery when it comes to getting our economy back into shape. Now, if, if anyone can do it, I think you know President Trump can, can lead us out of this uh, to a degree. But there is still going to be a lot of things that need to occur for us to get back on strong footing. And it's not just this virus. It's not just the lost jobs. It is also the fact that the Fed is buying a lot of this debt. It is that uh, the Fed is printing the money to cover this debt. How many states were in trouble before this? Even in a good yeah. economy, they were still running deficits. They were still 
still overspending. They were still overtaxing. Yeah. And you have places like New York and California that are saying, we need help and we don't, we're not going to claim bankruptcy. We need you to bail us out. No, they're not getting you know, bailed out. I hope not. I don't think they are. But, you know, how many more states, when you have people starting to have trouble paying their debts back here here's here's the other issue and yeah and i i agree with your sentiments about president trump i disagree that it's going to be a v as he keeps saying i think the, right i not because of him i think i think so much of it is out of the president's control because you've got to remember a couple things here You mentioned the, the, the borrowing of money. We're printing money, mm-hmm. and then we're buying it back. Now, yeah. that automatically creates inflation and rising interest rates. Yep. You have situations where companies, even companies that are open and have been open, are doing things like freezing salaries. Yeah. They're just saying, look, we don't know what's going to happen in six months. We're gonna, I'm just giving this as an example. We're going to freeze salaries. Okay, well, you still have a job and all that. Well, by the way, your health care costs are going up 5%. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you know, by the way, interest rates have gone up, meaning yeah. you're, it's going to be hard for you to get that car loan. Uh, and that puts a squeeze right. on people. They have less money to spend on entertainment. They have less money to spend on vacation. They have, they have to pay their electricity and their rent. and yep. their, All that has to come first. That has a ripple effect. We haven't felt that yet, Jay. No. We have not felt that. And I'm not saying things aren't going to get. They're going to get. No question that they are. We yeah. got 21 percent unemployment. It can't get any worse. Well, you also have you also have states that are at different levels. Mm-hmm. And two of our biggest states, New York and California, you're talking about 50 million people or so living in those two states. Yeah. I mean, if they don't get going, it's going to drag down the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. So you you, how do you write that ship? Then you look at. I want to bring it more down here to Minnesota. You look yes. at you look at local communities. How many communities up north are dependent on fishing, camping, uh, uh, people going to the casino by them, mm-hmm. or you know something like that? State parks, which are open, but you can't restaurants camp. Restaurants and taverns along like snowmobile trails. Exactly, and, yeah. and little. Mom and pop bars and grills and little shops that are there, little hardware stores and people go into their cabin and they've been told not to go. Mm-hmm. And I mean, how many how many of them are so on the brink right now that even if they come back, some of them are going to go out of business in three months mm-hmm. because they're just not going to they're not going to catch up. Right. So we haven't seen the end of oh, just no. because it's open doesn't mean they're all going to. No. Survive and, and, in three months. Any entrepreneur is going to tell you that each day is a new challenge, and you are yeah. never assured of hitting your financial goals. Yeah, and a lot of them live, I don't want to say mm. month to month, but... A lot of them do. Profit but, but margins th- are not that big for yeah, small business. And, and think about it yourself. How long could you go without a paycheck? Oh, you know, what day is it? Well, but I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, your average person could go a right. month, two months. You know, saving oh. is not something Americans are good at. Right. And, I mean... There's no incentive to save either. But put yourself in that shoe. Okay, let's say you haven't had to pay rent for... Well, you're still going to have to pay at some point. Yeah. It ain't free. No. So... That landlord though, is going to have to start paying their yeah, mortgage and they gotta, again. Yeah, and they got to pay their property taxes. And Where do they insurance. get the money from you? Yeah. <laughs> so that money's got to be paid. It may be paid down the line. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, that, that we, we're going to go up... We're going to get better, but it's going to be kind of like that game on the Price is Right, that doodly-doo, doodly-doo. <laughs> it's not going to be a V. We may want it to be, and some places it may be. Yeah. Some, in, but I mean, you look at the airline industry. How many, how many people are you going to have on a flight? How many, I mean, it could take the last time we had a recession in the airlines after 9-11. How many of them went out of business? How many of them, I mean, it was probably 2004 before they were really back up. And running, some declared bankruptcy and had yeah. to go through that process. And I just, I wish it was a V. I so hope I'm wrong. Yeah. But I think when you look at, at and again, we've had low oil prices, which mm-hmm. are not going to last because now nope. demand's going to go where it would have gone. Right. It'll catch up. I mean, they'll have to burn through some surplus. Yes. And it will. has gone up a little bit. It's it gone has up about gone 20% up or twenty cents a gallon. Right. It's gone up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, we're gonna. 
slowly, <laughs> you know, make that. Yeah. And you wonder about cities and like I look at a state like South Dakota as a good example of their number one business is tourism. Yes. You know, Mount Rushmore and the Badlands and Deadwood mm-hmm. and the Black Hills and and they may be open, mm-hmm. but how long before it's back to because like one question somebody asked me at my office the other day is, when do you think we're back at, like, January of 2020? When do you think we get back to 4% unemployment? And I said two years. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. It may be next year sometime. But I think it's going to be a choppy. I think we're going to go up. But I, I don't think it's going to be a I, I hope I'm wrong. But, and again, you know. we'll see. Because and I think the president with the banks, it, it who knows? I know, and I think the president really needs to push for that payroll tax cut. We're yeah. talking about a second stimulus. No, you don't give a handout. The fairest way to do it mm-hmm. is a payroll tax cut for employers and for workers. Mm-hmm. You can say, look, the month of July, no payroll tax. Yeah, That is the best and fairest way to do it because both sides... Get, get the money. We, yep. We're not waiting for a check to be deposited, which, by the way, I still haven't gotten mine. Um, and they're not, you know, they're, they're not waiting for some PPP program or something to give them a loan slash grant slash whatever the hell it is. Yeah. It's the easiest way to do it. And they've got to get the, he has got to, to I know we floated that a few months ago and it kind of went nowhere yeah. and it was a good idea. It is a good idea. But he's got to push that. He has to push it. Because yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think the house is going to go for it unfortunately I, I don't think so either but, but you know he's still got to make that case for it yeah. because even if he wins re-election mm-hmm. I, we're still not going to be recovered by that right and he if if there's a different house he's got yeah. to push that come january and i think by pushing it you get a different house because you're going to see a, give a him something to run is, on is not willing to to work with i mean the house really it's the biggest local election that there is right because a house district is is not very big and uh it's big enough big enough yeah yeah. you you know but you can still run into those people in the store once in a while if they ever come home uh (laughs) but here's the thing you know if you want a different house then put stuff out there that the current house won't go for but that you want so that people can see how unwilling they are to, to work with the American people. You go back to 1994, and why has this not been done since 1994? Right. With the, the contract, mm-hmm. with welfare reform, balance, you know, all the issues then. Yeah. Why can't we write up something that everybody on this one side can agree with, we all can run on? Mm-hmm. As simple as that. Yeah, you know, whether that's payroll tax cut, whether it's it's infrastructure, whether it's no bailouts for states, whether it's and that's another thing that concerns me and I think can inhibit our recovery is you know what the blue state governors are gonna do. Oh we got a deficit, what do they want to do? Borrow. Or raise taxes. And raise taxes. Which both, again would which they do every other year. Right, which would be a <laughs> double whammy. Yeah. Now I don't know how that can happen. I mean, it won't happen in a state like Wisconsin or Michigan where the legislature won't go for it. Right. But in the in in Washington, in Oregon, in uh, Mass or not Massachusetts because the governor there won't go for it. No. But but Delaware and New Jersey and all mm-hmm. these places. What do you want to bet? That's the that's the the recipe that's going to be pushed. You know, is that yeah. well? We have to we have to do revenue, and well, you know, because it's revenue, not taxes. Right, right. But it also can inhibit business growth because if you if you take a small business that's been shut for three months, open them up three months later, raise their taxes. You're looking at property taxes is another issue mm-hmm. that is gonna that local governments are gonna have to wrestle with, not getting their payments right now uh, on top of businesses not being able to pay them. Yeah. So. What are they going to do? That's a great question. I mean, and I mean, yeah. I, uh, none of them seem to have any answers right now. They're waiting for a bailout. They're waiting for the states to bail them out, for the feds to bail them out. I mean, I think that's the plan, mm-hmm. that we're going to get free money from somebody. 
That's no plan they're, at all. They're going to go after that grant money. They're going to go with that grant money. You're, you're never going to see more roundabouts and, and things created, I'm <laughs> oh, telling you. <laughs> so, oh, let's hope not. Yeah, well, you know, and, and let's hope, you know, that, that – uh, and here's the thing, too. And I, I got to credit Tom Hauser from Channel 5, who's one of the better – one of the best, in my opinion, in Minnesota, of the bunch – you know that we have in going after hard news and and things like that. He read and put this. He tweeted the executive order from Walls that there's no guarantee all this is going to open June first. Oh no, I disagree with that. I think he can't announce that date and walk it back. Everybody will just open anyway, and right. he'll lose control again. Mm-hmm. But I mean, a phased-in opening. If I can only have fifty percent of my customers and I got a hundred percent of my bills, that can't <laughs> last long either. You know, so right. I, I just, I don't know how a phased-in opening can work. I just, again, if this were a month ago, yeah, maybe we could have done it that way because you'd only been shut down for a short period, right? But wow. I think after two months. And then have two months open where I'm getting 50% of my money and 100% of my bills. I don't see how that is sustainable for anybody. It's not. So It's not. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've got a governor who uh, still, even in his concession speech yesterday, <laughs> uh, to, to you know, open things back up. It just still had the caveat in there that uh, if we see an uptick, if we see things going in the wrong direction, we're going to have to shut it all down again. He can't do that. I don't think he'll be able to do it. I, I think that he is. it's his way to save face. Uh, I think it's his way to try to get people uh, to do what he's saying. Yeah. But, I mean, there's no way you can open up bars and restaurants, have all these people come back to work, and then shut them down two weeks. There's no way that'll fly. No. And remember... After June 12th right now, he can't do anything. I still think his power might be taken from him, yeah. especially if he does that. Yeah. I mean, I think there's no chance. That's, I think that's his threat. I think that's he's trying to get people to voluntarily social distance or whatever you want to call it, wear a mask. I mean, I think that's what he's trying to do. But look, this stuff will not open. And trust me, it's not going to happen. There's no way you can do that and then shut it down. There's no way people are going to start. They're going to start making vacation plans. They're going to. I mean, there's no way that that's going to happen. Right. I mean, I don't think. But, you know. Yeah. I was wrong once. Yeah. I'm not very good at prognostication sometimes. <laughs> Maybe it's what I would do versus yeah. what reality is, but uh you know, but like I said before, I mean the uncertainty and the refusal to give criteria, the refusal to give dates has resulted in where we're at. He could have he could have laid out this plan 3 or 4 weeks ago. Yeah. And hospital capacity hasn't moved in the last since Easter. Right. So what what are we <laughs> Why this took forever and how blatantly political it was, I just, I, I think, hurts credibility. I mean, I think the governor's lost a lot of credibility. I don't care what polls say. I don't buy that. I think the reality is the frustration and the anger, and I think it's going to simmer for a while. I, I don't buy that this is going to go away and, and that. I, I just don't see that. I see a lot of people... The people who go out of business are not certainly not going to forget it. No. Their customers are not going to forget it. And, I mean, if this recovery does not get moving, mm-hmm. I mean, it's – you're going to blame who shut it down. That's yeah. no doubt about it. I mean, the unions and the media can protect him, but I don't think it's going to work. Hmm. So, well, I guess we'll see. Yeah. What's the first thing you're going to do? Say everything was open tomorrow. What would yeah. be the first thing you do, other than schedule a gig? Yeah, that which would, would be, be first on my list. <laughs> yeah, I think schedule 20 of them. Yes. I, think. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's my business. I know. I, I play I know. every week, and I haven't now played two for months. two months. Yeah. And it's killing me, and I, I feel myself starting to get a little crabby. So, right, and, and yeah. keep in mind, Jay. I mean, you are you are a ten ninety nine at that. Yeah. So nobody's giving you a bailout. Nobody's giving no. you unemployment. You just you're just eating it. Yeah. 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 I've lost thousands of dollars. It's, I, it's yeah. <laughs> 
Other than schedule a gig, is there something else you're just dying to do? Well, uh, um, for me and my wife, it's go play bingo. That, yeah. That's how old we're getting. Wow, camping is something yeah. I would really like to do. Hmm. Um, normally, that I'm doing right. that. I'm doing yeah. that by now. Usually, ten camp. Uh, I've already wet a line once. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I need to, you know. Yeah, uh, you, you can't stop me from fishing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What would I do? I don't. I I think I would like to actually go see a movie or go sit in a restaurant. Yeah, I think that's. Sit and have a beer. I think I would love to to go have a nice big old burger or some wings, and and then go to a movie and just enjoy it. I like to go bowling too. Ooh. How about that? That does sound fun. That Richter hook. I mean, I'd love to go. I'd love to do that. Yeah. So you know, and I, I, I just think um, I really want to play softball. That's the yeah. other thing I really want to do. And I don't know the schedule on that yet. We got to wait a month, I'm sure, for walls to figure out how we could sit in the dugout and and all that, and all the wives have to sit apart while yeah. they're watching. I'm sure something like that. <laughs> but uh, we may be starting in June. Yeah. I mean, I play up at Coon Rapids, and my brother-in-law is the manager, and he they had said that the compromise is going to be no fall ball. Yeah, and fall ball, contrary to popular belief, starts in August. Right. And it goes to like early October. I didn't play last year, but it fall ball. So, you know, the regular season, instead of being May, June, and July, mm -hmm. might be July, August, and September. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of the deal. So playing softball, uh, I really want to do, I really want to go to the VFW. Yeah. I so want to go there. Lose all my money at pull tabs <laughs> or something. I just, I just, I miss all my friends there that I haven't seen in so long. And, yeah. uh, you know, I just, I know it's not going to come back to normal right away, yeah. but I think it will throughout the summer because you're going to have outdoor seating and, mm -hmm. you know, I people are going to be doing stuff. I think one of the saddest things, and again, I hold the governor accountable for this because of the lack of direction, is how many uh, get-togethers have been canceled, uh -huh. uh, whether that's a county fair or whether that's uh, you know car shows. Yeah. I think the state fair is still on a ventilator. Summer camps. It's on a ventilator. Yeah. You're not hearing about ventilators, are you? No. Anybody wants a ventilator, get a ventilator. All right, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but it's just very sad, you know, pools of clothes. Right. And, uh, so, I mean, uh, families are going to have to figure out new things this year, but... Um, you know, it'll be awkward, but I think we'll we'll figure it out. But. Well, I can tell you this also, as a worship leader and and as uh, you know, being on staff at a church, we're all sick and tired of talking to a camera. Oh. We we miss the people that we serve. You know, I I had seen something go around about uh, oh, that's right, it was one of Walsey's uh, uh, <laughs> administrative people. That uh, he had made a crack at churches wanting, that wanted to get back open, saying it was just about wanting to fill our coffers and that we didn't care about the oh, people we served. Yeah, he, you know he deleted what? that real he, quick. He but. did, but some people got a hold of that, thank yeah. goodness. You, you, you know what? I'm sick and tired of the way that this administration has treated churches and and, and, and how they just keep stringing them along. Uh, and and it, it, it's not right. I mean, we have a, a constitutionally guaranteed right to worship as we see fit. Yeah. So, you know yeah. what? I am, That's probably... It's two parts of that yeah. amendment. It's worship as you see fit and freedom of assembly yes. and exercise thereof. Right. So, don't, so you have the right to assemble, mm -hmm. worship as you choose. Yeah. So you're breaking all of that. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and so... That is definitely one of the things I am most excited about to to get together with my three other people that we can allow into the building and 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 have a service. Uh, in a, I you know I I feel yes. the same way. I know you're a people person too, and well, and it's sometimes. Just, but, but I mean, <laughs> I just get an energy from people. Yeah. I get a. I'm tired of seeing the same faces at work. Uh, I'm I'm I just I I haven't seen my parents for two months. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen my mother-in-law i haven't seen, i mean yeah it's just you know it's got to come to an end and uh it's going to i mean it's just it's just going to and 
I'm going to see my dad Saturday. So I'm That's good. <laughs> fishing. So, you know, it's just going to and it has to. Right. So, you know, I hang in there, everyone. I mean, I know you're pissed. You're definitely pissed. I know that. And upset and frustrated, and you should be. You have every right to be. And I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you, and Jay, I'm going to close before we go to the sermon, the <laughs> sign-off sermon. Is that what we called it? I think so. Sign-off yeah. sermon. <clears throat> um, is that we really need to take a look. If, if I've learned anything over this, it's I'd rather die free than live in tyranny. I'd rather yes. die today than live in tyranny for oh, another week. Okay, I mean, I just can't. I mean, and, and all the power that one person can possess. You know, these emergency power. First off, an emergency doesn't last forever. No. You know, I mean, an emergency for 30 days is one thing. An emergency that it goes on and on and on and on and uh-huh. on is not an emergency anymore. No. Somebody who's not willing to give up one drop of their authority is not worthy of holding those offices. That's correct. Hello, Michigan. Not <laughs> worthy of holding that. So, to me, if we've learned anything, it's that we have got to reform the Minnesota Constitution. Others, there should be an amendment on the mm-hmm. ballot this year yes. to change. And the change that we need to make is no more of this. The legislature has to vote to end. Right. The legislature, both houses, have to vote to extend. Yes. We need to make a language change there. That should be on the ballot this year. I'll vote I, for it tomorrow. I, I'll, I'll go <laughs> down to St. Paul and rewrite it. I'll, I'll break it open and rewrite it if, if that's what it takes. You know, maybe all of you out there that listen to this should let your reps and your senators know about that. And maybe that maybe one of them would actually push it through into a bill. Well, here, here's the thing. Yeah. If, you're, if, if you're of the party that has the governor, you may not be the next time. Right. I mean, you've got to think about that. Right. Like, forget the coronavirus. Think about the next one, whenever that is, mm-hmm. or the next whatever. Or how about we limit what the governor can declare as an emergency? Yeah. I mean, do you want to? I'd ask a Democrat. Would you like? Would you like a Republican governor to declare abortion a state of emergency? I'm sure. Hey, there's people know. dying. There's there's yeah. lives being lost. So, yeah. and I'm I'm dictator now. And guess what? My party controls this part of government, and <laughs> they'll let me extend it yeah. for thirty days anytime I want to. Nobody's getting an abortion until we can decide at the exact moment that life begins. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah. How, extreme, how would you like it? How extreme can it get? So that conversation has to happen, and it's got to happen in every state, because in every state, except for a handful. Be it South Dakota, uh, be it Georgia, be it a few other states, governors on both sides of the aisle, I mean, let me say on both sides of the aisle, have gone way overboard. Absolutely. And way arbitrary on what they can and can't do. And, uh, you know, we, we have to have... We have to have something where we can handle an emergency and not trample on people's constitutional rights. Yep. That's what has to happen. And the idea that I'm being tracked with my cell phone, the idea that in Washington State I have to sign my name if I want to go to a restaurant. Uh-huh. I, I don't have to. If I have to go into Walmart, I can, I can do what I want. I would sign it like Harry Arm or something. I'd make up a name. But, I mean... Um, churches turning over lists like we talked about last week yeah, uh, and things like that. I mean, you, you, we can mitigate something, but, but I just wonder in some of these states, I mean, is it ever going to be quite the same again? Mm-hmm. And what, when power gets in the hands of one person, yeah, you know, history shows, and I'm not saying we're becoming, you know, you know, that Mao's taking over here. I'm not saying that, <laughs> but I'm saying yeah. it's almost worse to gradually lose your freedom than it is at once because when it's gradually, you don't notice it. Right. But I can't, I mean, a conversation about this has got to be happened. It's mm-hmm. got to happen now. It's got to happen yesterday. Yes. Constitutions need to be rewritten, looked at, changed. You cannot suspend my First Amendment because somebody gets ill. Epso facto K. 
cannot. You can make recommendations. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to get anybody sick. Come on, let's be honest here. Nobody really wants to do that. Yep. Okay, so I think a lot of, most people have good intentions here. So there has to be a way to do that, and it's got to happen. Mm-hmm. So there, there's my sign-off sermon. Wow. That's, now, Jay, that's good. Jay, you end the show yeah. like we end the show like we have for two weeks in a row. It's tradition now. Tradition. <laughs> uh, we've done this every week. We just named it two weeks ago. That's right. It took um, me three and a uh, half years to come up with a name. Although, I, uh, admittedly, I think early on this kind of sucked in its formative stage. But anyways. <laughs> now, it would, I don't even remember if I called it the sign-off sermon. No. And I listened to last week's show a few yeah. days ago. So why is I it that? I think you did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, way better than uh, the pregame preach. Okay, better than it's it, even better than Oral Roberts. I, I love I love a religious guy named Oral. It's even better than the greatest televangelist of all time, Robert Tilton. Oh boy, it is Jason Bradley with the sign off sermon. The sign off sermon. Episode 100 and whatever the hell we are, doesn't matter. The sign-off sermon, Jay, on the count of three. <laughs> the count of three? Oh, boy, that's well, are, that are you, are you, you want to go from ten? No, I just want to start. Okay, start then. Delaying Jeez. too much. I was going to strike you out first and uh, then... <laughs> my word. Like I said, uh, South, Korea, South Korean baseball is all those Koreans. Uh, all those Koreans in that league. My word. Jay, uh, you're on. Oh, uh, well, it it appears as though the, the clouds are starting to part and that uh, the st- sun is starting to shine and freedoms are being restored. Don't be fooled. Don't be lulled into complacency. Now is not the time. Because let me tell you, it is exactly when we allow ourselves to put our guards down that they come in and they do... All of the things that we disagree with. That is how we got here in the first place. That is what allowed this all to happen. And we decided to go along with it, and we tried it, and and all of a sudden we decided that we didn't like it. We put our guards back up, and we decided to fight. We decided to say, no, this is enough. This is not happening like this anymore. It's not time to go back to sleep. We have not won. This is just to use... uh, in illustration to make Andrew happy, this is just the top of the first. That's all. That's all this is. We have a long battle ahead of us. We have a long battle, and it is going to take all of us to be seasoned, road tested, worthy of being able to stand in there. If I can bring up an example, uh, in the Book of Judges, there is. A guy named Gideon, who was uh, kind of the least of the least of the least, you know. Uh, He wasn't much of anything special. And, uh, in fact, uh, all of the the kingdoms around uh, Israel, uh, there were a couple of them in in collusion together. And they, they came like an invading army, like a virus, and came into the land and they stole their crops. And that's kind of like today. You know, we have this virus come in and we all go inside and we hide uh, just like they did. They went and hid in the caves. Uh, and, and this virus comes and we lose our ability to, to make a living, to be able to, pro- to provide for ourselves, which is I mean, most of them were farmers back then. And, and, and that's what happened to them. It's not only just losing their food, it's losing their livelihood, which is what has happened to us. So this this guy Gideon is is uh, threshing grain in inside. <laughs> uh, threshing grain is always done outside because you, you take your, your winnowing fork, your pitchfork, you throw it up in the air, and the wheat and the chaff separate, the, the chaff blows away, and you're left with the wheat. Well, it doesn't have much of anywhere to blow when you're doing it inside, but he was doing it inside because he was scared to death that these invading armies were going to come and take the wheat, and who, who, do, who knows what, maybe kill him or whatever. Uh, but then God spoke to him and said, all right, you know, it, it, it is time for you to get 
out. <laughs> get out where you're supposed to be because I am clearing the way for you. I am making a way for you to be able to get out there and and make a difference and overcome these armies and repel the hordes. And that is where we are. The time has ended for you to stay inside. Granted, for those of you that are vulnerable, take your time. No pressure. But for those of you that aren't, the time is now. We have elections coming up in just a couple of short months. I mean, Democratic national election isn't going to happen until possibly like 45 days, 50 days before early voting starts. You've got to be kidding me. That That's not enough time. But yet that... That is what we do a lot of times is we just we wait till the last moment and we throw our hat in the ring and then we lose and we wonder why and we go away disgusted. The time is now. We need people in this state who are willing to make a sacrifice for their neighbors, their friends, their family. People who are willing to sacrifice. I, I, I'm not saying stop going to the lake. I'm not saying stop... Uh, having barbecues and cookouts every weekend, what I'm saying is let's take a little responsibility and a little ownership of our communities. Let's look at our city councils and, and what they're doing. Going into debt, passing more regulation, letting the state tell them whether they can open their businesses or not. Why? Why are we doing that? No, you you need to take a good look at that. Your cities, your counties. How are your school districts being run through all of this? I'm telling you, now is the time. And that's why we're here. We want to help you. So if you have any interest at all in whether it's running for one of those things or just getting on a, an advisory commission to, to help the elected board to come to decisions and let them know as as a citizen, as a resident, what your opinion is on something, then let's do it. We're here. This is our goal in Minnesota to find 20,000 people across the state to sit in these nonpartisan uh, appointed and elected positions. Because I can tell you, for those of you that that have a sheriff that isn't willing to follow the governor's orders right now that i mean that's a big deal isn't it but if you have a, a sheriff that is like no i'm not going to process can uh, carry permits i am not going to allow businesses to open i it matters a whole bunch if you have a city that there is worshiping at the throne of governor walls it matters a whole bunch so, we're looking for 20,000, just like us, that want to stand up and make a difference in this state. You get a hold of us at C-O-M-M -M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M -M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. We are here. And if you got anything going on in your city, your county, your school district that you want us to know about, want us to talk about, you let us know that too. Because we are here to change the way that this state operates, I mean, it's a shell game from the beginning. The way our local governments have been run has been a sham, has been a progressive ruse for the last 120 years. We need to fix it. We need you to help us fix it. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have two options. You can sit there. And you can hear what we're saying, or you can get some skin in the game. And you can stand up and help us, not only by just passing our, our podcast around and, and liking and commenting on what we do, but actually by becoming a leader in your area, as we have helped so many others do across the state. The time is now, and that is how we get good people at St. Paul. We get people who will stand on principle because we see them do it at the local level. So come on. Come one, come all. We're ready. We are ready to help you, and we hope you are ready to help the state become all that it is capable of being. You want to shut out the influence of Minneapolis and St. Paul and Duluth? This is where we start. 
This is our origin story. We love you, Minnesota. Now it's your turn to get to work. If I get too caught